Hey, before you watch the video, please just subscribe. It would help the channel out a lot, and it looks like only 2% of the views that we get are from our subscribers. So it would really help us out if you could just hit that like button, hit that subscribe, you know, Fusion 360 content. What couldn't you like about it? So let's get to the video. Hey everyone, this is Stevie here, and today we're going to be looking at how to make joints. So let's say we're making a chair, and I know you guys have seen this example before, but let's say we have legs that are 10 by 10. Now this isn't going to be anything fancy, this is simply just for demonstration, so we'll make this 50 millimeters tall. And then we will draw another sketch right on the top there, and draw in a circle. So if you remember, you can look for that triangle icon, that's the midpoint there, and there, and now we can just make this a 5 millimeter diameter, and we'll extrude that by 10 millimeters. So we want two legs at least, so we're going to move and copy, select this direction and create a copy, we're just going to move it out 60 millimeters. Now that's from any point to any other point on there, so like from here to here, or actually the middle of these two. So we can verify that by going up here to our inspect tool and selecting these two circles. You see there are two values, but if we look at these arrows, the two values dictate the difference between center to center and edge to edge. So we want to look at that 60 millimeters difference. So we're going to draw a surface here, or a, uh, a, a seat, my bad. So we will make this seat, let's say, 80 by 80. And we'll bring it up by 20 millimeters. And press enter. And now we want to make holes for these two legs. So we'll go down here to the bottom of it and sketch this out. So we want to make, let's say, um, we'll turn on construction line real quick. We want to make the lines, the, or the, the holes, 10 millimeters up from the bottom. So we'll make that 10. And then we want to make them 60 millimeters apart because that's what we wanted our legs to be apart. I think 60 millimeters is good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here, turn off construction line. We actually don't even need this line anymore. Actually, we'll keep that for now because I'll show you something in a bit. So we'll turn on our circle and just choose anywhere. So we're going to press D to dimensionalize, and we're going to select each of these circles, and I'm going to make them 5.5, so that way we have a little bit of clearance, because our pegs are 5 millimeters. So we're going to select this dimension, and before I type 5.5 in, I'm actually going to go over to here and click this one. And now that way, whenever I change the dimension of this one, so let's say 10, both of them simultaneously change. And that's just a neat little trick, keeps everything neat and tidy. So next thing we're going to do is we want to make the distance between them 60 millimeters wide. So we're going to type in 60 and press enter. Now obviously you can tell that one side here is a lot further away than the other side. So we're going to draw some construction lines again. This time we're going to connect here to the edge and here to the edge. Now we're going to go up to this constraint right here and click equal. We're going to highlight those two smaller lines and that way to make them equal it, and to keep this constraint right here it's going to center them basically which I think is pretty cool. So now they are centered in there. Now we can cut this out so we'll press Q, select both of those and we'll bring them down by 10 millimeters because that's how far we extruded those pegs and press OK. Now what if you're thinking, alright, I want to go back because I, I want these holes to be closer to the edge. Well we can do that now. So we can double click on our sketch real quick. And because of this constraint here, that will actually pull the whole sketch down. So we can draw, we can make it half the distance. So we'll make it 5 millimeters and press enter. And there you go. Uh, everything is moved down. But I'm going to keep it at 10 for now. And then we'll just finish sketch and it would have taken its uh, would have actually, so like if I do that real quick once more and I just finish sketch, you'll see it takes effect immediately. So we will do 10. And now we are going to start the joint process. So, but before you can do that, you need to do a couple things. First, we need to open up our bodies here. 
we need to convert these into components by right clicking on it and create component from body. And now we're going to do that for all three of them. And now we're going to select one of these, so we'll select this guy. And we want to ground one of them. Now what that does is it prevents it from moving. It will always be in that position now. And so you'll see this little pin right there that indicates that this is grounded. So these can move, but this one will not. So next thing we will do is we will click on joint. And we are going to select the top of this one. We're going to select the center of it actually. And if you press and hold control, you automatically snap to a couple points in here. So pressing control is the key. So we'll select that one. And then we will select the inside of this, but not see how it's giving us two. We want to look and make sure that the one that we're choosing is the correct one. And that's the one that's highlighted in there. If you press control, it'll snap to it. See, just like that. And we'll click on that. And now you see it has copied it, or it has moved it over there and jointed it. We're going to do the same thing up here. And we're going to click joint, the center of that and just go in here and click the center of that and press OK. And now you have nicely jointed legs. They are concentric with the holes that they are in and now, well, our chair or legs or whatever you want to call this thing, it's a little table, it can't stand with just two legs, so we'll do a third one. And we'll actually combine it so that it's a part of this. And so the way we do that is we'll create a sketch here we'll just make this uh, another 10 by 10 right so a 10 by 10 thing here and we'll just extrude this up I don't know how tall we'll just make it 100 just to be safe and we will create a sketch on the top of this to make a cutout for it so that way we can slot it in here so we're going to draw our two-point rectangle and we are going to actually we'll draw it right here and we need to make this 10 by 10. So I control Z. So we'll make 10 by 10. Now we see that, uh, well, we know that the distance or the total width of this thing is, um, the whole width of this is 80. So 80 minus 10 is 70. So we want to make it 35 on each side because you divide that by 2. So we're going to select here to here and we're going to make it 35 and now that is centered so we're going to control or we're going to hit Q and we're going to cut this out real quick now we want to joint this to there so that it can be in the proper position so we'll click on joint oh look at that see how I can't select it it's because it's a body we need to convert this into a component first now we'll hit joint again and we will select the midpoint of this line right here. See, by holding control, it snaps to these three points. But we want the midpoint of this one. Now we're going to go over here and see that little arrow right there. We're going to control and select that one as well. And now you see they are in the proper positions. That's really cool. However, I don't like these lines. I don't want them here. So what we'll go and do is we'll combine these. We'll select this combine tool right here and select these two bodies and then press OK. And now you see they are one piece. This is whole highlighted now because it's one sketch or it's one body. There's no more separation there. And finally we want to make this leg be the same length as these two legs so that it's stable. So we'll press Q and select this face right here. We will pull down but we don't know, we don't want to eyeball it. We know that th that looks about right. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel that. I'm gonna press this extrude button right here. I'm gonna select this once more and I'm going to select extent to be two object. We're gonna select one of these two guys and that way it automatically cuts directly to the same position, the same height. So that way they are nice and even. And there you go. That is how you can use the joint tool. That's how you can use the combine tool. And also just a couple little sketch tricks that you may not have known. So thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below what you'd like to see. And we'll see you in the next video.